Alright guys, this is part 3 of section 3.3. We begin section 3.3 uh, discussing about measuring the spread of our data. And uh, there's two ways to me measure the spread. You compute either the range, which is the maximum value in your data minus the minimum value, or you find the standard deviation. Um, I would encourage you to review the standard deviation because that number tells us something about our data. Uh, when the standard deviation is big, um, 4.7, I mean, sorry, 4.97, it's somewhat kind of big. When that number is big, then our data vary. Um, it has a wider um, spread. When this number is really small, our data tend to be close together. You might wonder, well, what do you mean by being close together? Um, if we look at this example, the average is 10. So if, if this number is really small, and what I mean by small is being really close to 0, like 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, or 0 0.1, those are really close to 0, then these data will be very close to 10. So again, if this number was really small, then all these data will be really close to 10. How close to 10, you might wonder? Well, this number would probably not be 16. It would be like 10.1, 9.9, um, 10.2, something like that. Okay, very close to, to 10. So this number tells us how spread our data is from the average. So the range rule of thumb, which is what this part is about, give is just a rule, so don't let this scare you. Think of this as just a rule of thumb. It tells us that if you need to calculate the standard deviation of a set of data quickly, you can actually approximate it. So instead of doing a lot of work to find the standard deviation, it says that you can actually approximate the standard deviation by first finding the value of the range and then multiply it by and then divide it by 4 that's what it's saying let me repeat that if you need to quickly approximate the standard deviation then the rule of thumb tells us that the value of the standard deviation is um, can be found by first finding the value of the range and then dividing that by 4. That's what it's saying. Okay, The range is 4. It's about 4 times the standard deviation. Um, one other way for us to express what we just did here is to say that the range equals to 4 times the standard deviation. But this is what we're kind of interested in if we're in a hurry to calculate the, the standard deviation. Hopefully that's one thing that you can get out from the rule of thumb, okay? And another big thing that I want you to get out from a rule of thumb is there is what we consider to be a, a minimum usual value and a maximum usual value. Um, these are basically numbers that are considered to be acceptable. Uh, and so you might wonder, well, what do you mean by that? So for now, I would like to define what, how to find the smallest acceptable number and the largest acceptable, acceptable number. And then we'll apply this to a specific problem so that you can deepen your understanding. Okay. So the rule of thumb says that the smallest acceptable number can be found by taking the value of the average and then subtract that to 2 times the standard deviation. The maximum acceptable value can be found by taking the average and then adding that to 2 times the standard deviation. 
Another way of saying two times the standard deviation is to say double the standard deviation because double means you multiply it by two. Okay? So let's work on a problem where we're asked to find the minimum and maximum usual value. Usual means acceptable value in the data above. So in this data above, we have our, um, our prices. And we also know that these are the prices of the spinners. The average selling price is $2.14. So from that data, we know that the average, and by the way, because, because this was a population mean, we use that symbol for our population average. So the minimum usual value can be found by taking the population mean minus twice the population standard deviation. Remember that sigma and s are like the same. All right, they both stand for the standard deviation. This is the standard deviation for your sample, and this means the standard deviation for your population. The reason why I use these letters instead of S and X is because this is our population data. This store sold um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It sold eight different kinds of spinner and that's all they have and we took every one of those into consideration and therefore that's our population so anyway so this is the our usual value all you have to do is replace these letters with the appropriate value the population mean is two dollars and fourteen cents the standard deviation for your population is point twenty three so I'm gonna go two dollars and fourteen cents minus two times point twenty three and then I'm just gonna calculate that and see what we come up with two point one four minus two times point twenty three and I came up with one dollars and sixty eight cents so this is one dollars and sixty eight cents that's the minimum usual value the maximum usual value can be found by taking the average plus two times the population standard deviation so 2.14 plus 2 times 0.23 let's plug that in and see what we get 2.14 plus um, 2 times 0.23 is 0.46, so 0.46, and that comes out to be $2.60. So $2.60. The smallest number that's acceptable is $1.68. The largest number that's acceptable is $2.60. What does this mean, you might wonder? Well, what this means is if you were to walk into the store and purchase one of the spinners and paid between these prices, then you did not get ripped off. That's what it means because it's okay. There's a variation in the price. However, if you pay less than $1.68, that would be unusual, which means that you got a really good deal. If you pay more than $2.60, that's considered to be unusual. And that means in this case, you just got ripped off. All right. Very good. And that's our rule of thumb. So review the rule of thumb, uh, especially the, min the usual value, minimum usual value and maximum usual value. And then I will show you what's the next part for the empirical rule, which is the last part of section 3.3.